hands are tired but here's my seven string Schecter this thing is so sick here's another pedal I got over the 4th of July weekend to kind of complement my metal tones these two make a great baby also I had some people realize this a lot of you guys follow me on Instagram but yeah I got Damascus I'm a little bit sweaty I should probably stream but it's just really fun for me and I don't um, I took a little bit of time off I had some friends come in town for the July 4th they were moving through the Texas area so saw them my dad actually got married and I hung out with family so and then I played some COD too <laughs> obviously now we do have a lot of parts I got my sister's suspension in we're pretty much ready to go ahead and start her wide body process my lift still is not ready to use I keep getting shipped the wrong hard line because because there's so many different hard lines that bin pack uses. It's been a long process, so I don't have my lift ready yet. I really wanted that for all the cutting and suspension install. So I'm gonna see if I can get that here in the next couple days. If not, it doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and do that anyways. I also, man, it is bright all of a sudden. It's been rainy. I also ripped the fattest Bernie in the JZX90 to celebrate the fourth. Speaking of rain, the Shank Shack is about to be built, but because of the rain, it's being postponed just a little bit. We're supposed to be breaking ground real soon, and a lot of you guys have been asking about uh, like filming the whole process of it being built. Of course. It's gonna be about a 3,200 square foot shop right behind my house, and I couldn't be more excited. This shop is going to allow me to do so many more builds and so many more things at once, and it's obviously gonna give me more room for more cars, more projects, more future potential. Now, even though I pretty much have everything for this car already, I'm probably not going to be starting the turbo kit build. I mean, I definitely need a free lift first. I would like the, for the shop to be like, or the pad to be there or something so the cars can be out of the way, but I definitely need a lift first, so. And I also kinda wanna drive this car a little bit first. It's been pretty nice. It's been really fun to drive actually but what I said whenever I bought the car my whole idea for this car is that I want to not do what is this all this fur on me Ew. I don't want to do another eBay turbo kit that's the cheapest possible way to turbo a car and it's worked out well you see my Supra my, my, my Supra makes 500 and something wheel horsepower on an eBay turbo kit now I wanted to go a little bit better quality than that because if you open up the engine bay of the Supra one <laughs> It's ugly. Nobody gonna wanna pop this engine bay and flex this at a meet. It's not gonna happen. Now, it's functional and it works and I'm really still surprised this turbo is not blown yet. But two. In solid, oh! it's in solid peanut butter. Please, please, no please. more eBay turbo. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I've gone through two or three eBay turbos already and uh, even though they work, a small amount of time they seize very quickly and um, I don't want that to happen so I went on a search I want to do the best possible inexpensive but decent turbo job on this that I can I want to be able to pop this hood and it be clean but also cost-effective so let me show you guys what I got Also another reason for building a shop, space. First and foremost, I want you guys to know, the reason that I do videos like this, I think it's important in life to be financially responsible. Now, there are also things you should never ever cheap out on. I have a Dietrichs fuel system coming, you should never cheap out on fuel. You should also never cheap out on cooling. Those are the two things that absolutely can be make or break for your car, and sometimes for your life. And so I never cheap out on that stuff. I want to encourage you guys to spend money where it matters. But despite what you might think of me having, I guess, eight, nine cars at this point, one coming from Japan, um, I am a very financially responsible person. I like to spend money only where I need to. It's probably why I decided to pursue a degree in finance when I was in college, because numbers just have always 
made sense to me and been important to me. These types of videos are for high school Evan who wants to know how to spend the least amount of money to get the most bang for your buck. Toyota used the hell out of the 2JZ engine and put it into a lot of cars. But there's a lot of 2JZ cars out there, so there's a lot of stuff available for it, just like Honda. I did a good amount of research. What I wanted to do was piece together something that looked clean at the end of the day, a decent exhaust manifold, a decent turbo. I wanted to be able to piece together all that kind of stuff to make the car look good with also keeping costs in mind. Now there's a lot of cheap turbos out there you can buy. There's eBay turbos which are pretty much just lowest grade, but some of them, you, you know, you can get lucky. There's also some good inexpensive turbos out there like VS Racing. Uh, Summit Racing actually has their own line of turbos. I think they just stamped their name on something. I usually run Comp for all my good cars. Comp makes a great turbo, but it's still pretty expensive. It's, it's very expensive. So what I wanted to do was get an inexpensive turbo, an expensive manifold, an expensive this, that, this, that, an expensive wastegate, because you gotta realize you gotta buy a blow off valve. Wastegate, turbo, exhaust manifold, intake manifold sometimes. You gotta buy intercooler piping or an intercooler kit. You gotta get a down pipe. It's a lot of work to do a turbo kit. I didn't want to buy a kit, but I ended up buying a kit because honestly, I think it was the best bang for my buck and everything fit. I'm excited to unbox it. Um, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and aim down just a little bit. I went with this kit because for not much more money, you could add a ball bearing turbo. It comes with an exhaust manifold and a wastegate. That's very exciting. Let me show you guys all what's in here. This seems like a lot of stuff already. Um, it's boxed actually pretty decently. This is probably the turbo. Yeah, that's gonna be the turbo. Um, we've actually got a lot of stuff in here. So let's get this guy out first. I'm the king of yin yang spinny things, baby. I'm gonna preface this with I don't really know much about CX Racing. I know they make pretty inexpensive parts for the Jay-Z platform, that's about all I know. Here we go, T4 gasket, and it's actually branded CX Racing. Got a bunch of lines in there. Let's see. This is a T4. I want to say it's in the high 60 millimeter range. It's a 60, it says 68 AR, but I'm pretty sure online it said 91. Maybe they sent me the wrong one, but that's okay. The lower the AR, the spoolier. So this is their ball bearing version. And it actually, ah, it actually does spin very well. Three inch V-band to exhaust, which is always really nice. That gives you a lot of versatility. Man, I'm already greasy. Dang it, I should wear, I should wear gloves. It's got water and oil. You don't actually, contrary to popular belief, you don't have to run water. You don't have to. You, you should if you can, but you don't have to. So the nice thing about Jay-Z's is they're big. They're, a th it's a three liter motor, unlike like the RBs. Two and a half liter, 2.6 liter, or even a one Jay-Z. It's hard to get those to spool turbos this size. You, you wouldn't believe what half a liter does. This turbo is gonna be pretty spooly. It's gonna be nice. I would guess it's probably gonna be rated to about five, 550 horsepower. Probably won't end up doing that though, because I do have a VVTi, which is slightly weaker than the non-VVTi Jay-Z's. Probably gonna be shooting for 400 to 450 on E85, um, keep the motor running healthy. But this is gonna be a good turbo. I'm actually, I mean, it looks like a, Turbo, so. Dang, I gotta clean my dang um hands. I'm gonna guess this is probably the exhaust manifold. Yes, sir. Oh, God. Here's one reason why I really wanted to get the CX Racing Kit. This is kind of interesting. It's actually dual drilled for a T3 and a T4. I'm not sure I would do that. This exhaust manifold, one, it's inexpensive. It's whatever, it is what it is. But two, on the IS300s, there are some kits out there that uh, don't allow you to keep ABS module stuff. So we're gonna keep that. I don't wanna have to delete that again. I did that on the Super and it was a pain in the ass. But here is my T3, T4 uh, exhaust manifold. It actually is pretty good. This is a lot lower sitting than my Supra one. So it looks like it's gonna fit pretty well. And it looks like it's out of the way. And I also may remind you, I don't have a distributor in this car. So, ooh, and I actually really like this. It's actually a V-band wastegate. I think it came with a 46 millimeter wastegate, which is really good for boost control. So what I do like about this kit as well is it does come with a mid pipe and a V-band down pipe. This kit supposedly is specific for the IS300, which is really awesome. It costs you $600 to make this down pipe at a fabrication shop. So, I mean, all in all, not a bad deal. Two O2 bungs and a flex pipe, which is nice too. So it's a three inch down pipe and uh, it V-bands to the turbo, which I don't feel like I'm doing that right now. This is probably what I'm gonna need next. Or my sharp thing though. I'm always losing my sharp stuff. That's really dangerous. I'm gonna guess this one 
is the wastegate. I'm gonna be correct. They have their own, I guess, I don't know if it's CX Racing branded, but it's a 46 mil wastegate. So it's a shiny boy and there's nothing special about it, but it is tile style. It's really important because we have extra tile springs laying around. Now I will say something, wastegates are super important. Long term, this can be a huge fail point for a car. Now this one doesn't actually look cheap, it looks fine, but you gotta make sure that you're not using too cheap of a wastegate because if that thing ever gets stuck closed, your motor is gone, it's done. What wastegates do is they open up at a certain boost pressure to allow your boost pressure to actually be controlled. If this thing never opens, then your boost pressure never stops rising. And so, you know, that's usually what blows motors. I mean, as far as I can tell, it looks fine. Um, we'll have to open it up and see what size spring is in it. We won't need a big spring, two JZs can make five 500 horsepower as you can see, 2JDs can make 500 horse on 15 PSI, so we don't need that much boost. I've got a bunch of miscellaneous accessories now, um, this looks like. Okay, that's super interesting. So this is an oil filter, I'm not really sure why this is a thing. I think it's to run some lines to, dude, I don't actually know. I've never, I've never seen this device before, and I've done a lot of turbo kits, so. It's something with the oil filter, but that's all I know. And last thing from this kit, oh, I dropped some stuff. They do give us uh, some oil lines. I will probably go ahead and buy my own. I think it's important to get some good braided lines. You can go to most um, hose stores or most racing equipment stores like Summit, or even we have Smiley's out here in Dallas. Uh, you can get prefabricated at certain, at certain lengths. I believe uh, 3AN is what I like to use uh, to keep that pressure high. Um, and then I have a wastegate dump right here. I'll probably have, probably have that refabricated. When I got my Supra, I had limited information about the NAT stuff. Since then, I have learned a lot, and I've seen how clean you can actually make some NAT setups. So what I wanted to do was go ahead and clean it up, get that ugly stock plenum off. What we got is uh, it's actually the same thing that I have for my GTE. So I've got a 90 millimeter throttle body that's gonna help a lot. It does come with a fuel rail, the deep motor stuff, is uh, actually pretty good. I set it up on my GTE and it, it it's fine. For this one, I wanted to get a nice, pretty, shiny aluminum intake manifold. Oh, it's very cold. I like that. You guys don't know, it's super hot right now and incredibly humid. So we'll have to try and keep, we'll have to attempt at keeping this thing clean, but the deep motor stuff is actually not bad for the price. Look how much it's fogging up. That's how humid it is outside. So we've got this and the new throttle body. This is going to replace that ugly stock plenum that goes over the motor. What this is gonna allow me to do is take the valve covers off and like repaint them, respray them, make them look nice. Guys, I'm really going for a clean but inexpensive setup. And I know that when we're done, we're gonna have a stupid clean turbo setup that works really well, functions really well, that we didn't spend an arm and a leg on. Not to say anything bad about any brands, but like you can spend easily upwards of $15,000, $20,000 just boosting your car if all you wanna do is flaunt, either flaunt your money or just get the nicest possible quality. And some people like to do that. I'm not bashing it. If you like to do that, that's fine. I don't care if some dude welded with a blindfold with his toes and charged $10,000 for the manifold. That's great that you did that. But I can buy another manifold that does pretty much the same thing that probably flows slightly less in it, slightly less efficiently for 1% of your cost. <laughs> generally speaking, I'm gonna say generally speaking, the more money you spend, obviously the better quality, the better flow, the longer lasting, the more durable you're going to get. I'm not bashing that, but also, there is a such thing as getting the best bang for your buck. Not everybody out there just wants to blow 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars on getting uh, an intake and exhaust manifold and a turbo. It gets expensive. I will say though, in terms of longevity, we are going to test the CX Racing one. I've seen good and I've seen bad from CX Racing, so we're gonna see. I do think it is also still important to spend money on a good turbo. My comp turbos have always been super good. My ball bearing comp turbos have been great. There's a lot of variables for stuff like this. All in all, at this point, I've spent, I wanna say about $4,000 at this point. That's without discount sponsorships. That's, but that also includes fuel system and then the Mishimoto stuff I'm gonna get. I got a Mishimoto radiator and I got a bunch of Mishimoto piping as well. And I'm still trying to decide if I wanna do a blow off valve, like, sounds pretty cool when you don't have 
I'm gonna probably go ahead and do like AM lines instead of like some of the cheap stuff they got me. And again, I'm gonna do fresh oil lines and a really good fuel system. Good injectors, probably a thousand cc or more. DW300 fuel pump. Boosting for cheap, even on my eBay stuff. Like on my Supra, I probably, I probably spent 3,000 or more. Uh, on the Supra, even on just an eBay kit. So you're looking at about five to six grand to do it right. If you have a good welder local, it's probably better to also piece together a kit uh, for an intercooler and an exhaust rather than buy an exhaust retail because exhaust can be very expensive. We're talking about a thousand for an exhaust. Like my Tome for my Supra was like $1,500. Now, granted, I wanted that exhaust and I'm glad I did, but I could have it at a shop, make it for 400 bucks, 500 bucks. It looks like we've got pretty decent parts to work with and uh, I am now an aficionado at the 2JZ, so I would think I can get this whole entire turbo setup at least started and running um, day one, easily. I don't know if you guys have seen me struggle for the past like 10, 15, 20 minutes but it's hot. I'm excited for a shop with AC because Texas is the worst. I've spent many years in the garage with no AC, no fans, no nothing, and I can't exclaim enough how excited I am to not have to deal with it anymore. <laughs> I think this turbo kit's gonna do really well, and if it doesn't, then we'll buy another one. Here's my daily advice for you guys today. Put 100% of yourself into every bit of work that you do because you never know what piece of your work will finally be noticed. The last thing you want is something that you put no effort in to represent your work ethic and your life ethic. Something that I have kept in mind since day one of YouTube. You never know who's out there watching you. You never, or for, if you're an artist, whether you're a musician or you paint or you draw, you never know who out there on the internet is going to see your work. Someday I could be doing this and somebody could think I'm funny as hell and be like, yo, do you want to host the freaking Tonight Show? The last thing I would want them to do is see bad work. So for me, every single thing that I do, and the reason why I, I usually try and take days apart is to plan things, is to make sure that I put 100% everything in. I want somebody to see, no matter what video it is, me giving my 100%. So I want to encourage you guys today, put 100% of yourself into all of the work that you do because you never know who might notice it, who might see it. So what I'm gonna leave you with today, and I hope that you guys do it, and I hope that it's seen by the right person someday. You guys have an amazing day, and I'll catch you later. We're about to start building the Shank Shack, baby. Hey! Hey, you guys know what I'm gonna say, right? Ha! Yeah, you guys have watched enough. If you don't know what I'm about to say, I got two videos for you. You can click on one of those two videos or both of those videos. I would recommend you watch both of them because they're really good. And subscribe.